Hello, and welcome to Vacation Station, hosted by Lisa and Nancy, editors of BigBlendMagazines.com. Hey, everybody, welcome to Big Blend Radio's special Travel to Larry County show. We air this every first Thursday at 4 p.m. Pacific time, and we chat with guests from the Sequoia Tourism Council, and we talk about California Sequoia country. Obviously, this region is known for Sequoia and Kings Canyon National Parks, Giant Sequoia National Monument, Sequoia National Forest, and then all the communities that make up Tulare County uh, definitely want to go hang out in them. There's great shopping, great dining, there's breweries, there's <laughs> art, there's all kinds of good stuff. And uh, when you want to think about small town America, a lot of them really have that. They're all agricultural communities. Uh, so anyway, the place to go is discoverthesequoias.com to plan your trip. But today we're excited to have Katie Whiteman on the show. She is from the Sequoia Parks Conservancy, and I encourage you to go to their website, sequoiaparks.org. So welcome, Katie. How are you? Thank you so much. I'm doing well, getting ready for the summer. And this is our, um, we're going into our busiest time of year. So we're super excited to welcome people from literally all over the world um, back to the parks. So it's um, exciting. Excited. Yeah. And it's a busy park it's, and summer really is the busiest time like in, yeah, in the parks. A, yeah, it's a very busy park. We see up to 2 million people a year um, in Sequoia oh. and Kings Canyon. So yeah, wow. super busy. Um, but yeah, we're excited, excited to, to get into the fun summer months. It, does the shuttle still run in the summer? The Sequoia it, shuttle? Yes, it does. Oh, yeah, cool. um, it does. And it really, um, it really does help support our visitors. Um, we've got a shuttle that actually runs from Visalia to the giant forest, which is really convenient. And the shuttle service, I believe, will start um, close to Memorial Day and go to the second weekend in September. I believe the last weekend is the weekend of September uh, 9, 10, and 11. Oh, awesome. Because that kind of minimizes the impact of what we're doing yeah. in parks, because that's Absolutely. something I always talk about is we especially now, you know, COVID is still kind of lingering, right? It, it just mm -hmm. it sucks. Go away. But um, <laughs> going out in our parks has become really popular, which is great. However, as we go into parks, can we minimize our footprint? And I think the Absolutely. shuttle is a way to help even with pollution, right? Absolutely. It helps with, um, yeah, with those, those harmful emissions to the trees and to the, and to the air quality. Mm -hmm. It also helps, I think, support the visitor um, mm -hmm. well, too, because a lot of times, in this, especially in the summer months, our national parks can feel kind of crowded and it's mm -hmm. hard to find a place to park. But utilizing the shuttle system, you can, you know, you can find a parking lot and you can utilize the shuttle system to take you to all these different areas. And, mm -hmm. you know, instead of spending your time looking for a parking spot, you could just spend your time hiking in the forest, learning about the trees, you know, enjoying the reason why you're there. So I, I really encourage people to, to utilize the shuttles. They're a great service. They are efficient and uh, they really do help um, increase the, the visitor experience. And you don't have to drive that hill. <laughs> That's exactly. exactly. We don't you like driving relax. hills. This is, yeah, you can just chill out and look at the scenery. And, you know, that, I, I love that that uh, is there, especially from Visalia. It's, you know, the biggest city in your area. And yeah, um, yeah you just hop on the bus and, and Giant Forest, that's got to be one of the most busiest places too because it you've is. got the visitor center but that's pretty much like your launching pad for all the programs for the Sequoia Parks is. Conservancy right? Yeah we launch um, we have a couple of different programs that we offer in the summertime and two of them are launched right from the Giant Forest Museum right there in the heart of the Giant Forest. We've got one walk what we call it's aptly named Walk Among the Giants yeah. and we take people on a two, uh, a two hour hike where they really get to understand um, the giant forest and giant sequoia ecology and what makes these trees so special and also the, the current threats that the sequoias are facing. So we really try to get the, the visitors in the resource and not only, you know, connected to, uh, to the forest, but connected to these, this very specific resource and um, trying to get them to, trying to encourage visitors to learn as much as they can while they're standing literally right under a giant sequoia. We also have a new walk this summer 
which um, we're really excited about. It is called the Sequoia Sunset Tour. And uh-huh. it is um, a walk where we'll be taking people to um, a walk in the giant forest during sunset time. And we're actually gonna walk them out to Sunset Rock where they'll be able to enjoy the sunset look you know, over the valley floor, but also um, we'll be able to do some fire education and show people firsthand damage of the KMP complex fire that did mm-hmm. burn through Sequoia National Park last year. And so it's a way for people to see healthy sequoias, but also to see um, you know, what the damage from that wildfire is and how we can um, be part of a proactive uh, change for that and recovery. It was in, we were there right before the fire and it was a beautiful spring and we went on program. What I love is you have this customized you know, programs as yes. well. So we could say, oh, we really wanted to see this and that. But the problem with us is we wanted everything. Right. <laughs> Everything. We want to do everything. We want to do everything. But uh, Rebecca from uh, Sequoia Parks Conservancy took us out, and we really learned uh, so much about the. You know, we think we thought we knew about the trees after all these interviews, but mm. she really got us to understand what a burl is, like those big gnarly burls. And then we yeah. looked at um, also what damaged us. We were talking about our footprint. Uh, we saw where people carved on the on the burl on the wood. So we we looked at. We were picking up litter along the way and, yeah. you know, <laughs> things where people don't realize like orange peel is not good for the environment, but right. we learned about, you know, what uh, the, how bugs make carvings in, in dead trees. So the importance of a dead tree you wouldn't think about, but we really did learn a lot about fire and how yeah. sequoia ecology really hands, you know, holds hand with fire to yeah. produce more sequoias. So she taught us a lot and a lot about birds. Yes. Because, yeah, that's the thing. And when you're there, you know, there's different woodpeckers and all. Mm-hmm. Ki- I mean, hummingbirds. I didn't think we'd see hummingbirds in there. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, she taught us so much. Yeah. And it was like going around with a park ranger. Everyone starts asking her questions. You know, yes. she, obviously, <laughs> she was like, you know, we went around Round Meadow on the big trees trail as well. We went mm-hmm. through the giant forest. And I mean, this is one of those easy trails, big trees trail. I always say, you know, especially if you're pushing a stroller, if you're, you know, mom or dad doing that or someone who's disabled, everyone can go on that trail and Absolutely. experience these giants and a meadow. Like right. they can get better than a meadow. Absolutely. It's a fully, <laughs> it's an accessible trail. And I think that's a great thing about walking around with a naturalist or with a park ranger is that you get a totally different experience than walking around by yourself. Um, you get to learn about how every, everything comes together, how, um, how all of these uh, different impacts of the forest and different resources really um, have a, these, these relationships. And I think that's the difference between walking around with, you know, an expert, a naturalist expert. Um, you really get to understand um, so much about, about the parks and the history and not only the natural resources, but the cultural resources mm-hmm. as well. Oh, yes. Yeah, and yes. that's the great thing about our custom adventures too. We have, you know, walks that you can just join. You can just join a group and if you can just join in, go for a two hour walk and then go do your own thing. But we also have those really unique custom adventures where we work with our visitors who, like you said, like they they want to do everything and we do, <laughs> yeah. every, we do all our power to customize um, an adventure for them. So if they want to see the night sky, we'll take them out to see the night sky. And then if they want to see a certain meadow in the giant forest, we'll take them out there. If you know, we, the sky is really the limit when it comes to custom adventures. And those are uh, programs we love to do. We I think it's have- neat because everyone's got a different ability too. like, Absolutely. you know, some, some people are like, oh, I'm super fit. And, you know, I could go hiking all day and still climb Morrow Rock, not happening for me. But I, I mean, I, I'd aspire to, but, you know, yeah. to be able to have those programs, especially if you have kids and if someone, like if a kid has an, an interest in the night sky, you want to be able to, that's something we forget about in our parks. Like, I love that you're doing a sunset hike mm-hmm. because that's when everything starts to change in the forest at night. Like the birds start to go, okay, it's time to roost. You know, it's all these mm-hmm. different things happen. But we forget about our parks at, at those time frames, and I think that's Absolutely. great with what you guys are doing. Yeah, we've got a saying um, that, and it's, we you hear it in almost every national park that you go to. But we say half the park is after dark, mm-hmm. and a lot of people only, you know, they think they can only visit the national parks when it's when it's when the sun's out. But really, when the sun, you know, during that transition time, the sunset is just. I think it's one of my favorite times to be in the giant forest. The colors and that golden hour, it really you know, brings the the sequoias to life in a whole different way. But then when the sun sets and the stars come out, 
it's, you know, it's a whole different park. And yeah. we, we always talk about that. Not only do we, you know, help preserve and protect the giant sequoias, the, the, the mammals, like the, the American black bear or the mule deer or the fishers, but we also protect and preserve people's ability to connect with the night sky and to see mm. those stars, to see the Milky Way for the first time, to learn the constellations. And it really is, there's something literally every hour that's <laughs> going on for yeah. someone. Yeah. And the great thing about custom adventures too, is yeah, we can work with people from, you know, everywhere. If people just want to spend a day, you know, just, they can't, they can't walk very far, but they still want to learn things. We can, we can still provide a meaningful experience for them. Mm. Um, if people want to hike 10 miles, we can do that too. You know, and so there's really something for us. <laughs> For, for everyone. That's cool because you really do learn and, and it makes sense. And what I got out of it um, was, and I know this stuff too, but it's, but when you're out with a naturalist, you really get to understand how the web of life works and how mm -hmm. everything is connected. You know, John yeah. Muir talks about that famously, everything's mm -hmm. connected. And when you're out there and you realize like, oh, we need this tree for this specific bird and this plant over here needs this amount of sunlight to grow. And you start to realize how all these little systems, these microsystems, equal this giant system of where you are, where you're standing right there. It's very mm -hmm. humbling, but to have that understanding, especially for kids, is super cool. Mm -hmm. So you got the custom programs, and then you've got like the sunset program. Uh, this summer, you're saying there's something new as well that you've created. Well, the sunset program is the new program. And okay, so that's, that's a our, new one. Yeah, that's the new one. And then we've got the walk among the giants, and we also have our program, which is the wonders of the night sky which is a program that people can join. It's $10 a person. It's an hour. Um, we have to wait till the stars come out. So it's a little bit later yeah. in the day. It starts at 9 PM, but that's um, that concentrated time where we get people outside at night looking up at the night sky. And we do a lot of night sky education. We talk about light pollution. We also talk about the life cycle of a star. And in the summer months, we really try to get people out there to experience the Milky Way. The Milky Way is, the, is um, best visible during the summer months. And it's beautiful here in Sequoia and Kings Canyon. So we take people out and we get them um, hopefully a, a, a really clear night and we teach them the summer constellations. We get them connected to the Milky Way. They're seeing some, a lot of people, they, that's when they see the Milky Way for the first time ever. Yeah. And yeah. so um, we try to facilitate that experience. Especially if you live in the big city like LA or even Fresno, absolutely. right? Yep. And yeah. Even Fresno, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, so that that is awesome. And so you've got all these programs. But one thing I really want people to also understand is that you're really like a, a the nonprofit arm of Sequoia and Kings Canyon National Park that you help fund them for different projects. I know that you've got a fire fund as well that's been going um, because there's a lot of I mean, it's like who's going to fit the bill for all, you know, the and all of this at this, you know, yeah, reforestation has to happen, but also look at the signs and, you know, things like that have to happen. Right. Absolutely. And so we, as uh, the Square Parks Conservancy, we are the nonprofit partner to Sequoia and Kings Canyon National Parks. And so we support the parks in so many different ways. As a field institute, we help support the park on an education level, but that's just a fraction of what we do. We also are in the visitor centers and we supply all the educational products in the visitor centers, which is another thing people don't realize is that when you go into a visitor center and you get that magnet, or the sticker or the patch or the shirt, that souvenir that helps you to capture that memory, um, the memories that you've generated in the parks, that is all supplied by the Sequoia Parks Conservancy. And that money goes back to supporting park programs and helping um, to support Sequoia and Kings Canyon National Parks. And we also have a philanthropic um, area where we raise money for certain programs and certain projects specific to Sequoia and Kings Canyon, whether that would be wildlife management, or um, the yellow mountain or the mountain yellow legged frog. I was going to um, bring all, up the froggies. Yeah, yeah. the frog cool. and the fishers. <laughs> the fishers, yeah. And then recently, um, we, because of the KMP Complex Fire, we started the KMP Complex Fire Fund. Um, a lot of people know that the fire started on September 9th in last year when a lightning storm came through the parks. And the, um, it was really devastating. This, um, the last, between the fires over the last two years, between 15 and 20% of all um, monarch giant sequoias, so a monarch is anything over a four feet of diameter, have been destroyed by wildfire in the last wow. two years. So 15 to 20% of the world's population. That's a big deal. Yeah, that's, that's. It's, it's a huge, yeah. it's a huge deal. And so 
we are working to raise money for recovery efforts for the fire. And mm -hmm. currently our, our, our big goal is a million dollars. We're currently sitting at um, over 600, a little over 600,000. And we're okay. um, hoping to start another campaign called the Big Give, where we are going to really concentrate to hit that million dollar mark. So that way we're supporting all of the efforts here in Sequoia and Kings Canyon to really protect the, mm -hmm. the, the monarch sequoias. And they are a keystone species, and they're not only being affected by, by fire, but they're also being affected by climate change and, um, and drought and bark beetle. And really what we need is we need help to, we need to help the scientists understand what's happening to them and doing everything that we can to support the after fire um, effects of, from the KMP. And then also looking ahead about how, you know, fire, Fire isn't just a one, you know, a one-time story. I mean, in fact, right. fire goes on for years, decades. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just because the fire is out now doesn't mean that we're still not dealing with the fire every single day. Right. And you know, and that, all, for that recovery. the prevention that you guys had there too. I mean, it was like, it was like they were wrapped up like big burritos, you know, with yeah, the, the yeah, absolutely. thing. But, I mean, all of that knowledge comes from fires of the years and, and you know, all the preventative maintenance that the park does too. I mean, yeah. there's just so much that goes with it and our fires are not going away. The hurricanes are getting worse, tornadoes. Of, I mean, I don't think there's a tornado season anymore. It's, 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 I mean, I'm not kidding with this, this climate change thing is, is real and it's something we have to look at and not just shove aside. And when you see these amount of fires, I mean, and, and it does affect people, uh, the fires and the sequoias, as, as I recall, these giant sequoias, it's on, they're only found now in, in the Sierra Nevada mountains, right? That's it. Yeah, they, 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 we have, I think it's over, you know, they're, they're around 78 groves in, this, in, the, um, in the Sierra Nevada range. And those are managed not just by the national parks, but there's a bunch of different agencies that manage those, um, that manage the trees. And, you know, this is it, like the monarchs that we have right. now, you know, it takes around 2000 years for a sequoia to start from a seedling, a sapling, all the way to, you know, wow. these big iconic species. And so if we were to lose all the monarchs, that doesn't mean that sequoias, you know, go away, but we won't, it takes thousands of years for them to get to what we know of them now, that huge monarch status. The General Sherman, the General Grant Tree. Right. Those the General Grant Tree, you know, the largest, the, they're the largest trees in the world by volume. And That's amazing. They are, they're incredibly resilient, but they're also incredibly fragile too. And so, um, so we're doing our best to support. They do fall down. <laughs> they fall down. Yeah. And they're they not, do. yeah, they are, um, they're not, uh, you know, they, they do experience negative impacts from drought and from the bark beetle. And um, so we're trying to do our best to support the science that's happening right now, every that's single cool. day that the park service is facilitating to do everything that they can to understand what's going on to preserve and protect this, um, this iconic species for not just today, but also all the future generations. And for all of us to learn along the way, you guys are Absolutely. really great about that. I mean, having, you know, go again, going with a the naturalist, they know what's going on, what's happening in that science, and you really get to learn and the importance of fire, but also preventing fire, that weird balance is, yes. is out there. And then you look down and you learn, Oh, those big sugar cone pine uh, cones mm -hmm. are from the sugar pine tree and they're giant, but here comes a little teeny sequoia tree cone. <laughs> I mean, they're like little teeny ones. And you're like, how did that little thing create this giant? You know, the, right. I mean, uh, let's give everyone an idea about, because you do see when people get up into the avenue of giants, they literally stop their car and their jaws mm -hmm. are down at the floor. You can't see them right. <laughs> right. Right anymore because <laughs> these, these are just there. You it's just like what man it's, yeah, it's yeah, crazy absolutely there it's incredible and the seeds of a giant sequoia is you know it's no bigger than an oatmeal flake if you got a every if everybody were to get yeah. into their cupboards at home you know get one of those old-fashioned oat flakes put it in your hand and what you've got is the start you know the same size as a giant sequoia seed and wow. they are so small and only one in a million seeds actually makes it to a monarch status and wow. so they, um, they've got an incredible um, story. And yeah, there is that um, kind of um, beautiful tension of fire in the forest where fire is essential to, to, the, to the lifespan of the giant sequoia. And 
um, there's that that really beautiful tension between um, a, a and fire you, ecology. You learn that when you go out there, which is is super cool. So people who donate through the sequoia parks uh, org, if you go there, you'll find yes. about the different programs and then also to support SBC in, in general, the Sequoia Parks yeah. Conservancy, because you guys have to be sustainable too. We want you there Absolutely. in all the programs. So that that is awesome. Uh, one thing I want to bring up is that Dark Sky event. I remember the very yes. beginnings of this festival, but now it's a huge deal. And I remember, I think it started as a one evening thing and now it's kind of bigger, right? Or what, yeah, what's happening, so... especially post COVID, because I'm, I'm pretending it's not around anymore. <laughs> So, um, so we are um, going to try to hold an in-person festival this year um, in September. Um, the Dark Sky Festival right now is scheduled for September 23rd, 24th, and 25th. Okay. And we're hoping to welcome everybody back to the parks. Obviously, it will depend on what is happening with the pandemic and current um, county regulations and state regulations. But our goal is to bring everybody back to the park so we can all kind of gather and look up at the night sky and um, we have three days of events planned where we will be welcoming, you know, speakers from all over the country from, you know, hopefully we'll have some NASA scientists and uh, members from oh, cool. uh, JPL to teach us what's currently happening um, in the space program and what's happening on Mars with Perseverance and how climate change is also affecting the night sky. And so we have just a whole weekend plan of education and then also we have our, you know, famous kind of star parties that will happen on Saturday cool. night where we'll bring out lots of telescopes so people can not only learn the constellations, but see some deep space objects as well. Oh, cool. And have cocoa and, mar and marshmallows. Right, yes. And so, yes, um, <laughs> <laughs> if people want to fill up their thermoses with hot cocoa or coffee or anything, we, we totally welcome that. It makes the, the night really fun. <laughs> uh, no, that's awesome. And then uh, in November, you have a big event too. That's the Run Wild yes, in the Park. we have our... Um, you know, since COVID, we we have uh, learned um, some creative ways to keep people engaged in the national parks. And in 2020, we started the virtual, it's a virtual race called Running Wild. And our first year, we ran wild to Mount Whitney. So we had a virtual race. So this wasn't a, a race in the park. It was virtually done. So people can- This is my miles. style. <laughs> yeah, they can complete, complete the miles anywhere. But um, we challenged people to complete the distance from Giant Forest to the summit of Mount Whitney, which is a little over 60 miles. And so they had a wow. month to complete all 60 miles. And we were teaching them about things along the way. And last year, we ran wild um, around Ray Lakes, which is an iconic backpacking loop in the Kings Canyon. Um, area of the park and people were able to do one loop or two loops or five loops or 10 loops and they kind of were able to choose their challenge and then this year we are running wild in the giant forest where oh, cool. people um, can uh, learn about the giant sequoias and they have challenges that they'll meet along the way and again this is a virtual race it's to be completed you know not in the giant forest but um, wherever people are and um, when people hit certain milestones we you know, we send them fun um, facts about the giant forest and along the way they can also raise money for the Sequoia Parks Conservancy to support cool. the work of SPC and so we you know um, we have people that get really creative where they get a you know a certain dollar amount donated for every mile that they complete so if they get people to pledge like hey if I complete it will you donate one dollar per mile that I complete and it, it makes it really fun and we try to build a really fun virtual um, a virtual community where not only are people learning about the parks and engaging in the parks in a really different way and from the comfort of their homes and their you know, surrounding communities, but they're also giving back to the parks in a really tangible way. And cool. the, the pandemic really hit a lot of nonprofits to the parks um, really, really hard. And so events like these really help us honestly keep the lights on and keep our important work going. So that way we can continue to, to support the National Park Service in any way we can. And they, like with the KMP Complex Fund is trying to get them the resources they need so they can get scientists on the ground, scientists literally into the trees to, to understand what's happening so we can, we can um, preserve and protect these, these amazing landscapes for not just you and me, but for, for all yeah. the future generations to come and enjoy. Absolutely. And one thing too, you know, these kind of events, it gets people that may not even have a chance to get to the park to be part of the park, which I Absolutely. like too. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Because yeah, it's around can, the world, you know? It's yeah. around, we've had people participate from everywhere. We had someone participate from Australia last year. And it's an cool, opportunity cool. for them to learn and feel like they're a part of the story of Sequoia and Kings Canyon without having to travel. 
that's awesome. I love that. So everyone, Sequoia Parks, uh, can, uh, sequoiaparks.org, right, is the website. Yes. Okay, good. Or sequoiaparksconservancy.org. Whenever, oh, you'll find it. You yeah, and so yeah. <laughs> and go go be part of these programs. It's a super cool for you know when you're going there the summer, or fall, you know even winter because winter you guys do like the snowshoe Absolutely. hikes. Yeah, we do. Snowshoe I want to do that. Yes, I want to do that. <laughs> yeah, we try to get people out. You know, rain, shine, snow, whatever. Um, well, we it's always interesting. Yes. The yeah, there's always something to, to experience no matter what the weather is like, you know, and, and so I'm, I'm yeah, I, we have to do, sequo we've done the sequoias in the snow, and it's magical. It's so pristine. It really yes. It's, it's not like being in the city with snow. That's not as, as much fun, you know, right. as far as I'm No, concerned. there is something magical about being in the giant forest in the wintertime. It is, mm -hmm. it's just, it's, it's breathtaking. It really is. It really is. Uh, one thing I want to touch on before we go is I know part of the restoration work is Crystal Cave, and that's a very popular summer. It was typically open, what, um, through Halloween. Oh, gosh, I remember that big spider, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> the spider web at the gate, I, you know, but uh, Crystal Cave is is just, it's magical. I feel like Sinbad and yeah. the Sailor Man going in there, you know, it it is this it, it's one of those iconic um, attractions in the park. Uh, so hoping that it may be restored next year, do you think? Yeah, so the Crystal Cave will be remain closed for the 2022 season. Usually we try to open the cave for Memorial Day, honestly, all the way to Thanksgiving, depending oh, on what okay. the weather conditions, um, you know, uh, throw at us. And Crystal Cave is such a special um, part of the parks. Um, it is the it is one of the only ways that visitors can experience the underground wilderness of Sequoia and Kings Canyon. Mm. And not a lot of people realize that not only do we have the largest trees in the world and some of the most pristine um, wilderness and one of the deepest canyons in the lower 48 states, but we also have this amazing underground wilderness, over 275 known caves in Sequoia and Kings Canyon. Wow. And Crystal Cave provides a, a portal into that experience. And the uh, one of the fires that started during the KMP complex um, started very near uh, Crystal Cave. And um, unfortunately, the area was um, did sustain a lot of, uh, of fire damage. And so the, the road specifically has over 5,000 hazard trees on it right now. Oh. Um, the, the area was severely burned. And so park, um, the park is working really, really hard to restore access. And we have a couple of big things. We need to restore parts of the trail and reestablish power. And it's going to take a little, a little bit of time. And uh, so our goal is to open it for summer of 2023. Uh, so we can, we can welcome visitors back to that, to that very awesome. Um, See, this is why we need to help on the financial side. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Those so, things it is. Yes. It's, it's to, it costs money to to uh, to to reestablish those things to get the trails literally um, you know open back up to get the the road safe for people to travel on to get power back down to the cave and um, it takes time and effort and, um, and 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 resources and funds to be able to do that. Yeah, awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. It's good to see you. And You're very welcome. I think the first time we met you was actually at the Crystal Cave. I was thinking back. Probably. It was like. 10 years ago. That was, was a thinking, long time ago. Yeah. I know. Yeah, I, I remember know. that day. Yeah. <laughs> I know. It was, I was thinking, cause I think it was our first visit to the park on our tour too. Cause we've been on mm -hmm. doing this tour for 10 years now since yeah. 2012 and Sequoia and Kings Canyon, I think was park number six or something that, that we visited. And um, yeah, now I think we got about 800 under our belt of wow, all kinds incredible. of parks. I know it's such a sad life. <laughs> right. Oh, I feel bad for you. <laughs> I know, really, it's a sad life, but uh, it's such a beautiful area, and we can't wait to come back. And everyone, again, uh, you can go to discoverthesequoias.com. That's the website to plan your trip. Uh, go to sequoiaparks.org and also keep up with us at bigblendradio.com. And we air this Tulare County show every first Thursday because there's a ton going on out there and a lot to experience. So thank you so much, Katie. Thank you so much, Lisa.